He's the king of Lincoln right now. He's Fred Hoiberg, and he's good enough to join us to chat about this new gig. So, Fred, congrats first off on the new job. You could have taken a lot of jobs. Why Nebraska? Well, can I just say, first of all, what an honor it is to follow Kenny Goins on this on this great <laughs> show. Uh, I was at that game the other day. My son Jack is, uh, is a walk-on for Coach Izzo, and to see him step up and hit that three uh, to put them in the Final Four was absolutely phenomenal. It was such an exciting uh, day, great for the Big Ten. But uh, back to that, that point about Nebraska, I mean, you were a highly sought-after guy. What is it you saw in this university that made you say, I want to go there and coach hoops? You know what? I, you know, first and uh, as big as anything is, is the uh, history with my family uh, in the state of Nebraska. And, you know, my grandfather coached here at Nebraska back in the 50s and 60s. Uh, he was here for nine years. Uh, you know, in my opinion, the, the best victory in the history of the Nebraska basketball was when his team beat Wilt Chamberlain uh, back in uh, uh, 1958. And then they followed that one up with, they canceled school that next day and then followed <laughs> that up with beating number one uh, Kansas State the following week, led by Bob Boozer. So, uh, you know, it's, it's really, you know, kind of cool. I was born in Lincoln. Um, you know, my life has come full circle, uh, which is, is very rare in life. Uh, but to be able to come back here and coach in front of my family again is something that was very attractive. And, you know, as I said in the press conference, you know, we played in an exhibition game uh, a couple years ago in Pinnacle Bank, Bank Arena. And uh, Doug McDermott actually had a game winner uh, against the Mavericks, but I was just blown away uh, by the facilities. And we got a tour of the practice uh, facility, and in uh, that arena is as nice as any in the country. And the support, uh, you know, to see every seat sold out, uh, you know, the last couple of years, you know, I know we'll get that support again, uh, you know, from the fans and from the community. Uh, and that's something that's very attractive when you're looking to build a team. And, and those fans are excited about having you, largely because of the tremendous success you had when you were a college coach last at Iowa State. When you look back at your time in Ames, what were the reasons you had so much success? Well, I, one was we, we did, a, I gave my staff a lot of credit for going out and identifying the right players uh, to get the talent in there to where we could compete, uh, you know, against the Kansases and the Texases and the top teams in our league. Uh, and we did it in a pretty unique way, at least back then. Uh, you know, now it's more mainstream with, uh, with transfer players. Uh, we had four guys, a couple Big Ten players, and Royce White and Chris Babb, uh, who came in, and, and Chris Allen and Anthony Booker were the other two, and they really helped us uh, turn things around quickly. Uh, that first year, we didn't have a lot of scholarship guys. I played six, basically six players that gave their heart and soul. It was one of the funnest teams I've ever coached. Uh, we had a 500 record, and in the next four years, we were able to get in uh, to the NCAA tournament with an exciting style of play. You know, we led the, uh, led the nation in threes a couple times in all five years, uh, led the Big 12 in three-point shooting. So, you know, something where we're going to try to put an exciting product out there on the floor in play-up tempo, uh, you know, and try to build the right roster. But, you know, as we try to establish uh, things here, uh, you know, again, getting the right players, you know, trying to put a system around them based on their skill set uh, is going to be step number one. Let me ask you a couple questions about you personally. You mentioned in the press or two the fact that a scholarship offer was extended to you from Tom Osborne to be a QB, I believe. What do you remember about that? Well, it was a thrill for me. I, I love football. I was, I was actually, uh, you know, not to toot my own horn here, but I actually was the player of the year in my state in, in football. Okay, and all I, right. I, I always remember Coach, Coach Osborne, when he, when he talked to me, uh, talked about revamping the offense and they were going to throw more and all that, which, you know, when you get into recruiting, uh, you know, I, I then understood he was lying to me. And you know, <laughs> uh, he would he would have put a bunch of weight on me and, and made me a, a tight end or a tackle or something. So uh, but it, it was, uh, you know, as a guy that grew up a big Nebraska football fan uh, to be recruited by Tom Osborne, who, uh, you know, is as good a football coach, uh, you know, historically as anybody. Uh, it was a real thrill. And how good nowadays is your three point shot, Fred? Uh, well, it's like, you know, it's like riding a bike. I, I, you, you never lose that. I, my players at Iowa State, none of them ever beat me in a three-point shooting contest. <laughs> Is that right? Not once? Never, never. Tyrus McGee was the closest, but, uh, but never quite got me. I love it. I love it. Well, then I won't challenge you. Fred Hoiberg, congratulations <laughs> on the new gig, uh, gig. We really look forward to talking to you over the coming years.